Now you may have seen my most recent video, which was a sort of a thousand subscribers special where I made 1,000 soldiers in the game Napoleon's Art of War uh, go on a review, a great big parade, for us to see and sort of get a real sense of just how many people 1,000 really is, because you know on YouTube it may not seem like a much, but it, it's a very big number as I'm concerned. However, in that parade, well, while I would never deign to judge the performance of my beloved subscribers, uh, if this were a real military parade, I hate to say it, but it would have been an absolutely abysmal show, and so I thought that I would spend a few minutes now talking about just how many things were absolutely, horribly, historically incorrect with that video. Alright, so you can stop the video just there, because we've already had our first of a number of problems. You may be thinking to yourself, well, what could have that parade hasn't even come by yet, there's just a couple of horsemen, what could possibly be wrong? Well, I don't know if you overheard it or not, but there are men having conversations in the ranks. Now, um, if this was just an army, say, marching from, you know, one destination to another, or if it was a small foraging party or something like that, it would be a lot more forgivable for men to be speaking within the ranks, but this is a parade. This is a review. The general is here, and these men are talking to each other. I think just then it, it wasn't, you know, idle chatter. It was some, you know, probably like an NCO giving a warning or some such. I don't remember what he said, really. But in the event of a parade, the only voices which you should be hearing are those of, well, of course, the general, if he chooses to speak, it'd be impolite to do so, but, you know, no one's going to tell him not to. But it should be the officers of their detachments giving orders, such as eyes right, eyes front. And that's about it. That's the only thing that you should be overhearing. So, uh, it, it's it's a factor, or it's, I should say, it's, it's a feature of the Napoleon Total War game, where your units, you know, the men within them, will just give each other idle chat, you know, when they're just sitting around or when they're marching into a battle. So sometimes it's, you know, lighthearted and it can be humorous. Other times it borders on, on the disturbing and the sad. Sergeant, are we all going to die? Things like that. It's very appropriate, of course, for when men are staring their, you know, death in the face. But um, at a simple review... Keep quiet, lad. So this is more the fault of, you know, basic editing as opposed to uh, any real problem within the game itself, but uh, where's the band that's playing this music? Normally at a military parade, either you'd have the band situated, you know, at, at a fixed, a set position, uh, playing the music for the review as it passes by, or of course you'd have individual units with their own bands as they march on by. Uh, the audio that you hear playing here is actually uh, uh, music from a Household Cavalry review, which I also have on my channel. Um, I, I took a bit of the audio from that because it, it sounded really good, you know, as the cavalry was passing me by, the music seemed to go up and then it went back down, so it sounded appropriate. But um, as you see here, of course, we have some huzzas approaching, but there's nothing actually making the noise. It's just men on horseback, and that's a big problem in the game in general for the uh, Total War series, is that there really isn't any music, but we'll get to that one a little bit in the future. Let's continue here. You know, Looking at these, uh, these huzzas going by, they are very well disciplined. Their dressing is perfect, which, no, that that's quite standard, that's good. Uh, you can get quite good dressing when it comes to cavalry forces, uh, even in the field. That being said, however, those horses are very well behaved, wouldn't you say? Now, you look at any military parade in the entire world, I don't care how professional, disciplined, and, and you know, excellent they really are, horses are... Rel rel relatively fickle creatures, and uh, the fact that none of them, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, the white horses there with the uh, general staff are bobbing their head a bit, but the fact that none of them are moving around, none of them are antsy, none of them have their heads down, they all look very proud, it's all just, well, hmm, it's almost like a computer simulation, because it's all just a little bit too perfect. I'll show some footage here of an actual cavalry parade just to show exactly how difficult it can really be, even for a very well, you know, trained uh, horseman to keep, you know, control over one of these animals. They're, like I said, they're very fickle things, but uh, minor complaint, let's carry on. Ah, uh, yes, and here we have the infantry approaching, and dear God, what is going on with that flag? It's another strange aspect of the of the game mechanics themselves, which is really incorrect here. Just to say that the banners which the soldiers carry 
really seem to be, you know, I can understand they're rippling in the wind as, you know, on this map, as it were, there are meant to be very powerful winds. You can see things, you know, blowing it and everything. But that is not the manner in which uh, flags behave. And, you know, what's more, alongside the single flag, not even rippling in the breeze, but just sort of banding about, you know, very, very wildly, as if it were made of rubber or something like that, it's constantly being pulled on by some invisible giant, uh, there's only one flag. We see here the, the national flag, you know, the, the, the Union flag, but there is a distinct lack of, well, regimental colors. There's nothing to actually differentiate this group or this set of colors from anything else. Normally, at the head of any sort of parade or procession, you would have the, the national flag, and you would have some sort of uh, symbol to differentiate exactly what group it is. What's more, as well is you can tell the officer there is standing just you know alongside with his man so is the banner carrier with uh, musket men flanking him on either side whereas in a, a proper parade you would have the officer who's in charge of the entire you know regiment or battalion or company you know whatever's being paraded he's somewhat in front with his sword so he can salute you know give proper honors uh, and so he can voice commands properly from a position of um, distinction as it were <laughs> I think you can tell what my next complaint is going to be, and that is, dear God, the step! Now, the dressing is alright. The dressing being, you know, the uh, the fact that they're in straight lines and they're keeping proper distance from each other, things like that. That's known as your dressing, sort of the position of each man within the formation. But the actual step is horribly out of place. It's almost as if there's absolutely no music to set out the step, as in Napoleon's Total War, you do not have that, and there are no NCOs to balk at the men, you know, to order, you know, to keep them in their uh, proper places. Not, not only that, of course, it seems like the men just don't even care. Uh, this is a parade order, you know. You need to keep proper discipline when it comes to your parade step. What's more is we have the men in various positions. Well, some of them are in a proper position of arms. You know, some of them are at the shoulder and they're advancing properly. Uh, other men seem to be prepared to go to the uh, prepared to charge. Some of them are at the at the um, support your fire locks kind of, and a lot of them are just hunched over like you know, like just complete wretches who are half starved. They're not putting on a very good show here. Um, this sort of behavior, this sort of uh, position, if you will, would not be acceptable in any proper parade, and you could probably expect a man to be rather severely punished if he were to put on such a pitiful display in front of someone, you know, so important as we have here, being Lord Wellington himself. What's more is, as the men are passing by, they are rendering absolutely no honors to their leader. Uh, they are all staring straight on forward, you know, straight faced, rather stoic looking. They don't give, they don't give him a cheer, they don't give him a glance, they don't give him anything. Rather, as soon as the contingent, as soon as the unit is approaching the officer, what they should you know, give the command for is eyes right, and the entire company should turn their faces as one to the right to sort of just basically just look at the general, you know, acknowledge that he's there. It's a form of salute while on the parade. The officers, of course, would lower their swords in salute as well, and then only when they have finally passed the general would they give, be given the orders eyes front, at which point they continue looking forward as they are now. So, yes, an extremely disrespectful as well as shoddy display that we seem to hear, uh, have on display here by the foot guards. Oh, and what's more, one of these fellows just reminded me, look at their arms, if you will. Whenever the man is properly at the shoulder arms, you know, uh, say, take this fellow, for example. He is at a, a rather proper, you know, uh, uh, position, if you will. He, he, he has the, uh, the uh, musket at the shoulder, he's advancing with his chest out, his eyes straight. He seems like a very respectable soldier, one of the few in this motley little band. However, look at his right arm. It's swinging... Uh, not even formally, but very freely, whereas, uh, in this time period, you know, uh, it's a later development, yes, that you have the arms all swinging in a very, you know, uh, set, orderly form. At this time period, the arms shouldn't be swinging at all. If they look more like toy soldiers, that's good. That's exactly what they ought to be looking like. Toy soldiers. You can also look at, uh, sorry, this is going back a little bit to the leg movements. We've already covered how they're horribly out of step, but look at how they're moving the legs themselves. It seems as though rather than being in a step, now not only are they not in proper step, but 
They're not even holding a step themselves that's just out of order. Uh, they seem to be walking, you know, just sort of walking across the field as they would, as they care, as is comfortable to them. You know, that they're lifting up their legs a bit, so I suppose we can say, oh, well, that's kind of like, that's kind of like a march, right? But it may well just be because, you know, the topography is, you know, it requires them to step highly. You see, look at how tall the grasses are there. They have to raise their feet up a little bit. Whereas, you know, th there is a very uh, formalized at this period uh, form of, of how exactly one moves the legs, which you can see, I think, very well displayed in a reenactment that I took part in, you know, in the in the parade stuff that we have there, which I will show a clip of it here. You can see that uh, the way that our toes move forward, rather than touching the ground with the heels first, you know, the toes move forward and the entire foot touches the ground like that sort of thing. That's the sort of parade step that we should be seeing here, and it should all look, again, as one, rather than what we have here, which is just sort of a, a, a sauntering, which I, I don't... I don't recall having gone through the drill manuals. I don't recall there being a saunter command anywhere in there, but uh, let's continue. Ah, yes, uh, the drummer and the fifer. Now, Napoleon Total War made a, uh, a nice little improvement over its predecessor of Empire Total War, in that in Empire, every unit would have a drummer, which would just sort of go, you know, whenever you are marching along. Uh, Napoleon Total War added a fifer, and so they actually have little songs that play, you know, little tunes that play as the units march out, which is quite good. However, uh, if you look at the drummer, he's not actually marching out a step, which of course would be, you know, one two, one, two, three, whereas he's just sort of going as fast as he can, as if he's drumming for, you know, a, a man to be shot at a firing squad or some such, as if he's drumming some, some, some sort of call. It's not marking out the step at all, it's not even going along with the tune. It's just a constant roll, which I don't know why they bothered to even include it if they're going to do a thing like that. Oh, here's another thing that I just noticed. The men's uniforms. I'm not going to talk too much about the men's uniforms because, you know, there's a lot to talk about there, and I'm sure that's good for other video topics for other days, you know, far off in the future. But the men are inconsistent in their uniforms, which is a whole nother level of inaccuracy. And the inconsistency that I'm talking about here is look at their shakos. You see, Half of the men seem to have their shakos, you know, with the cap badges uh, on display, as well as the plumes and everything. The other half have the, have the uh, covers on them, you know, rain covers. Uh, they would um, have these, these special covers that you could put over top of the cap to protect it from harsher weather conditions, harsher climate, which you would be wearing, you know, say, you know, the night before Waterloo when it was absolutely downpouring rain. You wouldn't have the cap badge exposed to those sorts of conditions, help to keep it clean, help to keep the actual hat in good condition and protected. Odds are, unless conditions were really bad on the parade, you wouldn't be wearing them on parade, and even if you were, all of the men would be wearing them, not half of them. It seems as though the officers just said, yeah, do whatever you want, you want to wear it, go ahead, if you don't want to wear it, then I won't make you to. And half the men decided to, and half of them didn't, and it makes it look just so unprofessional, it makes it look shoddy and horrible. Ugh, well, moving on. Ah, uh, yes, and here we finally come to the uh, general himself, to Lord Wellington, uh, riding between his troops to personally see them all off uh, to the next engagement of, you know, what have you, whatever romantic sentiment you want to include, I just thought it looked like a good shot. But as the general is riding by like this, we see all of the foot soldiers, the foot guards and the uh, line infantrymen as well, are standing, not only are they at the shoulder, which we'll get to that in a bit here, but a lot of them are shuffling their feet, they're looking at the ground, they're looking at the sky, they're having conversations with each other. No, no one seems to really be really paying any sort of mind to the general. If they are to make any noise at all, the only acceptable noise would be a cheer, you know, hip hip huzzah, for their leader. If they are to break their, um, their stances at all, it should not be to shuffle their feet, it should be to raise their caps in admiration and in salute and, you know, all of those jolly good things. Whereas what they're doing now is just overall disrespectful. It's, it's as if, you know, just some guy is riding between the lines rather than you know, uh, rather than the highest of all their generals, rather than the Lord Wellington himself. Uh, what's more, as I said, they are at the position of a soldier under arms. They are at the shoulder. Uh, whereas, I should think, you know, you can be at the shoulder, I guess, but it strikes me as 
not exactly very good. What they ought to be doing, and this, of course, is not a feature in the game, so I couldn't have them do this in the actual video, but a real, a proper soldier on a real parade would currently be at the present arms, or, or the rest your firelocks, as it's sometimes called. They would hold the musket in front of them with their right foot just behind the left. It's, um, you know, whenever you see a modern day parade and say the sovereign or, or some sort of officer is going by, the men always come to that position to render honors before their superior. Here, eh, eh, it's just Wellington. It doesn't matter. Just eh, let him go by. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, and here we came to the very last bit. You know, just, just a bit of fun, just a bit of cheeky humor, as it were, whatever that word means. But uh, there's also something, you know, horribly wrong with even something as simple as this scene. You call that a volley? Alright everyone, before we end this one with the traditional sign-off, I just wanted to make a quick little announcement. You see, I've had a number of people over the past, what, d days, weeks, even months, uh, asking me for my Steam profile information, you know, uh, it having come to light either through uh, comments or through, you know, videos such as this one, that indeed uh, I actively play games like Napoleon Total War, Empire, uh, Shogun, I also I play the, the Mountain Blade series, and all those sorts of different things. Uh, you know, generally speaking, if it's a historical-based game, I'm at least aware of it. Um, all that coming to light, people have asked me for the Steam information so they can contact me and play and all that sort of thing, and I've always been kind of, you know, hesitant to give out that information. I've always said to people, I I'd rather not, I hope you don't take offense. I've always been paranoid that people would take personal offense to that sort of thing. It's not meant to be that at all. But, um, I I've sort of gotten over that apprehension, I think. I I've come to the conclusion, I think it'd actually be kind of fun to, um, interact with people a lot more directly, so to say, a lot more, um, clearly and immediately than just through the YouTube commenting system or through the private messaging system. So, uh, I've actually gone ahead and I've organized a, uh, a little group page, which I figure some of us might, uh, you know, in enjoy taking part in. Uh, I hope it's not overly pretentious to refer to, you know, us or to that little page as, as a community. But, you, you know, it, it seems as though we have, if nothing else, a community of like-minded individuals, you know, people who are interested in the 18th and early 19th century uh, military history. And it might be a nice little place for, you know, not only us to go and play games, but to communicate and to have conversations about these things and learn to complain about how horribly historically inaccurate all of these games really are. So if you're interested in, uh, in joining that and taking part, the uh, information will be down below in the video description. So that will be the end of that little plug, and uh, until the next time I am and I shall remain, my dear viewer, your most humble and obedient of servants.